Hi friends, today I'm going to be adding a bunch of White's tree frogs to a pre-existing 70 gallon terrarium that I built a while back. This is a fully bioactive setup, and I built this about 7 years back I think. I've had a number of different animals in this over the years, and it's perfectly well suited to just about any reptile or amphibian that thrives in humidity. It's been sitting in my living room now unoccupied for at least a year, so I thought it was time to finally put something back into it. So the goal of this video is to give you a quick rundown of all the components that make up this tank, and then I'll tell you a little bit about White's tree frogs as I put them in. Starting at the very bottom of the tank, and one of the most crucial components to any bioactive terrarium, is the drainage layer. In this one I've used clay balls, as they're very light. The space between these clay balls acts as a place for water to pool once it's run through the soil above. This prevents your substrate from becoming overly saturated and stagnant. And as it collects down here, it also evaporates and helps humidity within the tank. Directly above this is a screen mesh layer. The obvious purpose of this is to keep your soil from dropping down into the drainage layer. I make a point to always use fiberglass screens in my tanks because this doesn't rust. Now above this is my substrate. There's plenty of options and lots of variety available when choosing a substrate, but it's really dependent on what kind of animal you're keeping. For this purpose, I've used organic potting soil and a mixture of cocoa fiber. Potting soil really is ideal for this kind of setup because being that live plants are an integral part of a bioactive tank, they do need something to grow in. A big part of the fun of building a bioactive terrarium is choosing the plants in which you'll be adding. But you do need to do some research at this step and make sure that they're non-toxic and compatible with whatever species you'll be adding. This tank also contains a variety of live moss and the background and other additional elements are composed of corkwood. Corkwood, along with grapewood, is the go-to material for terrarium building. This is due to the fact that both of these are highly resistant to mold. They'll last much longer in this humid environment and not rot away like some other types of wood might. So now we're well on our way to having a thriving mini ecosystem in a 70 gallon terrarium. But there's just a few more very integral components that need to go into this to really bring it alive. Every good bioactive terrarium needs what's often referred to as a cleanup crew. These are tiny insects which will colonize and live within your substrate. Their job is to break down waste, whether that be the byproduct of your animals or the rotting organic matter that comes from your plants. In turn, these insects will fertilize your soil and keep it healthy. So as you can see, what we're doing here is building a micro ecosystem where every component is crucial and dependent on each other. So now to properly nurture life, our frogs, plants, and insects require energy in the form of heat and light. For this specialized setup, I've used three separate bulbs. The first is this basking light. This is on a timer and runs on a cycle of 12 hours on and 12 hours off. The next is this UV light. This simulates sunlight and provides essential vitamins to both our frogs and our plants, keeping them alive. I have the timer on this one set to one hour before and one hour after the basking bulb turns on. I do this to just kind of simulate a more naturalistic environment where there's a dawn and dusk period. That way I don't just get blasted with light the moment that they all turn on. The last bulb is a ceramic heat emitter. This doesn't provide any light, it's just a heat source. This bulb runs almost continuously, but I let it turn off between 2 and 5 a.m. just to simulate the coldest period of the night. One other thing I've added which is not crucial but I do find that it helps is this fan. This runs for one hour cycles throughout the day and it helps to circulate air and keep oxygen in the tank. This is good because this is a glass terrarium so it does get really humid inside. The one last component which all life on earth needs to survive is water. When I originally built this tank I built it with a fogger built right into the drainage layer but unfortunately I didn't have the foresight to think about the fact that when it broke down after having built around it I would not be able to remove it. So I'll probably add another automated watering system to this at some point but for the time being I'm just going to water it daily. It's important to add a lot of water to your bioactive tanks. You want to keep them wet and humid, particularly if you're adding frogs, as they really need this. So now that I've explained the basics of how this build was made, let's talk about the inhabitants. After years of keeping frogs, I've kind of decided that these guys are my favorite. White's tree frogs have a lot of character and personality. They just seem really intelligent to me. They have a lot of amusing behaviors, and they're fun to interact with. In this tank, I'll be adding four of these guys. This is a pretty big enclosure for four frogs, but these guys do grow to a decent size. They're actually still small right now, so they have a lot of room in here to grow, and they'll really enjoy the space. I want them to be happy, because they're really cool. 
These animals do have some specific care requirements, but they're more or less just like keeping any other frog. I'm not going to go into full detail on their care, because that would be a video in itself, but I do have a complete guide, and that can be found on my website. Feel free to check that out if you're interested. As long as you keep their environment wet, and you keep them well fed, they're going to thrive in here. Being tree frogs, these are also arboreal animals, which means that they live in trees, so they're going to benefit from all this space and the ability to climb around. As you can see, it's taking no time at all for them to move right in and get comfortable. One thing that I should also mention is that it's crucial to wash your hands before and after handling these animals. Frogs actually drink water through their skin, so if you have contaminants on your hands and they're unwashed, it can make your frog sick when handling it. But you should also be careful to rinse off any excess soap from your hands and dry them very well before you handle your frogs. You really don't want to get soap on them either. Ideally, once they're in their terrarium, you're going to handle them as little as possible. Some people will also use latex gloves, but you want to make sure that they're non-powdered. I personally don't think gloves are a fail-safe method either though, so I'm just really careful about keeping my hands clean when I handle them. You also need to be very delicate with them because their skin is fragile and you could hurt them quite easily just from handling them. These frogs love to bask in sunlight. Once they find a nice spot, that's pretty much where they're going to stay all day. One of the best things about White's tree frogs is their feeding response. These guys are so gluttonous and they'll just lunge at food as soon as they see it. Watching them jump head first into a cricket or tackle a worm is an endless source of amusement for me. It's funny to see something which is usually very docile and lethargic suddenly become a voracious predator in a split second. Oftentimes they'll just lunge at and attack anything that crosses their line of sight. This little guy is unknowingly eating a leaf, so I'm just going to help him by pulling that out. I'm really looking forward to the enjoyment I'll take from watching these guys grow into this tank. Hopefully they'll have a long and healthy life in here. If you have any interest in keeping these frogs for yourself, once again, I'd recommend checking out my care guide. It'll give you some specific breakdown information on how to care for them best.